developed that for four years. And they've got, you know, 30 people on staff. I don't know how many they have. <laughs> I'm just throwing that number out there. But how could we do it just starting where we are in a very simple way? Yeah. Uh, and not make it a big deal and then let it grow. Just what's, what's the one thing we could do now to begin to get that communal effect? Yeah. You know, you may think about, I know in our context, um, this has been one of the learning pieces too, but um, we've got a number of people that are homeless or our local community is poverty, mm -hmm. uh, comes out of poverty. So um, this was a huge light bulb for me, but so much of communication in, in a poverty circle is oral and not written. Mm -hmm. And so, so much of all we were doing was written. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, wow, why can't we get it? You know? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I mean, so simple start. I mean, it just si as simple as conversation. Hey. And you know, I give with those trusted individuals, but I can see this playing out so easily um, because it's just in the cup of coffee and we're talking, you know, and suddenly you just start hearing it all come out. Um, and it's remarkable, well, we know this, but it's remarkable what people remember when oral communication is the dominant thing. I mean, it is, it rattles off. And so you even brought up Driscoll, it's probably heavy written community. And so what he does is a very heavy written thing. And, Maybe he addresses it for what they need, but yeah. Uh, That's good. Yeah. It seems to me one organic place for, for these sorts of conversations to take place that will lead up to the, um, the culminating message would be in discipleship huddles. Mm -hmm. If, for mm -hmm. instance, I discipling uh, six or eight people in the congregation <coughs> are able to reproduce that by the end of the week, uh, maybe some of that filters back. Um, but in those discipleship huddles, which usually are, are groups of people who are committed enough to be there every week. Um, that seems a great place to gather information and perspective and, uh, and, and also shape people towards where you're gonna lead them on Sundays. We're talking about, Andrew was the evangelist and talking about and sliding in those personal stories. I think that was the one thing that drove me nuts. The, the last preacher I was under, he all of his illustrations were, Oops. were stupid internet yeah. stories that you just read and I'm like dude are you can do you not have like a personal can you not sit, do you have nothing in your life that can apply first and it's when honestly when people we talk about farmers markets and we talk about and I repeat that over and over and over and over and over again about farmers markets reminding them that's why we're there why we do maker day all the all those things and you just you see the connection there and then when they're doing it they're they they, they will run up to me like a little kid going, I, I just talked, this, I just handed out a balloon and talked out, talked to this couple for half an hour and they're, and it's they, but they, it's all of those things connected to that. Um, and I would say, I mean, we do that in our missional communities, obviously the topic of whatever we're talking about, we plug it in through, through, but that's cliche, that's, you know, a lot of, most, most people do that in their small group structures through the discussion off of the sermon, but it is very, very, very applicable, but Dave kind of flips it over the other way and mm -hmm. does small group before he does. Before. And I've gone back and forth with that too. Like, well, maybe if we did all the questions prior to sermon and then you get kind of the Paul Harvey, the rest of the story mm -hmm. on Sunday of it, but that would require people to have consistent attendance on <laughs> a third. It's not just sitting in the staff meeting. Is that what I'm saying? Because I'm with you too. I'm yeah. like, I, as you said that, I'm like, I'm, that's what I don't yeah. like. It's the, li it's the, life, then, um, yeah. the life experiences yeah. every day as you go out and you rub shoulders yeah. with people and the day-to-day -day stories that develop out of people's lives. That's where it becomes real on Sunday. Yeah. And so I'm, my guess is people resonate to your preaching because well, that's, they, yeah, they know yeah. you're living. I mean, they see you not spending right. 20 hours doing it. They're like, man, he's out. I mean, and I don't know. I think it's probably... I my guess is it makes it. And it is. It, I think it for my personality too. To be honest, yeah. just like I say, I'd rather be a bread truck driver. I think it would last a couple of days, and then I'd start going nuts. And I know that sitting in staff meetings yeah. always made me. I almost yeah. went jihadist like in those meetings. I couldn't handle it. So, but it's like attention you live. I mean, I, 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 I resonate with what you said because I'm like, man, yeah, three hours is great time if I wish I had more I'm like yeah. it's a tension where I'm like I don't want to devote that much time to this this one hour yeah. event or acts about three years ago so I was doing it with Soma communities in Tacoma and we would it would be about on a group of 15 20 guys that 
we would work on the chapter together and, uh, and then preach it. And then a lot, a lot of it was done through the city, through the conversation, the thread that we were having on the city of, of whatever the text was. But it was really, I mean, really, I mean, you, it's like having 15, 20 scholars working on the same idea and coming at all different perspectives. I think there's I, some of the, like I said before, my, my challenge is just timing. I mean, I've got a three, four hour block of time that I can really crank down and, and work on the text. And that's not, never good enough for me, um, but it is, it is what it is. And I typically do it during the early part of the week. So it just, so it allows for other events to take place and illustrations and things like that to be fresh. I might call focus on you. Huh?